Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Monday, July the 26th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we left off on Friday of last week, we were beginning to see uh, what God requires and desires for His people who have went astray and have found themselves in a place uh, looking at, sh at certain destruction. He says if you look around and see that that uh, that the that the locusts have come in and devoured all the goodness out of the land. That there's no more joy. It seems that that, that ultimate ultimately we're going to just falter and fall away. Uh, he says there's a way um, to uh, to restore yourself in the sight of God, who has all authority and power to remove all things that uh, that seek to destroy uh, us in life. And so. As we picked up at chapter 2, and blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land know, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. I mean, destruction was on its way, and he began to describe how we need to turn it around and rend our hearts and not our garments, find ourselves in weeping and mourning and fasting, showing ourselves to be seriously broken over our sin-sick situation that has led uh, to the destruction uh, that is on its way. But as we pick up here in um, verse 18, he, he's gone through this whole list, and, and I want to, well, let's pick up with verse 17, because he says, Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep before the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine inheritance to the reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say amongst the people, Where is their God. Now, this is a difficult um, parallel for us because um, we once were a nation that did believe in the Lord God Almighty and in, in the God of the Bible. And now we've made God in our own image and we've become no better than the heathens who desire the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We want health, wealth, and prosperity. We want to be able to have the right to life, uh, the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. Uh, we, we don't want to surrender and submit to the authority above us uh, as God Almighty. We no longer want to listen to the truth of His Word. So in one sense, we could say there are people who are doing this. There are people that are crying out to the Lord. There are people that are, are fasting and weeping and mourning. And certainly uh, my heart is uh, rendered often at the situation in which our nation is headed. It breaks my heart to see us going down this path, knowing that it is headed for ultimate destruction as we continue to fight for the right to defy God, not fight for the right to submit to God. And so uh, as a nation, as a nation, and so uh, as a nation, uh, we live amongst the heathen. And so what God has says, if we'll do this, if we will come and seek his face, then he can heal. And so all of you know 2 Chronicles 7, 14, as the scripture says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. That's my people which are called by my name. He didn't say the world around them. He didn't say the pagans that were amongst them. He said, if my people, um, he said, if they would um, uh, seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, their wicked ways, not the not the heathen around them, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their trespasses and I will heal their land. Well, listen to what he's about to say right here in Joel. If they get on their face, weep and mourn and fast and pray and confess their sin, then notice what he says in verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Now, we're not the land of Israel, and I don't think we're... Uh, we're, we, we can parallel even closely uh, to that place where God said he's going to put his name forever. But we were, were a nation that was called by his name, that, that was planted and, and given this great land to serve and to worship the one and true and only God. And I believe that God would pity. He would, uh, he would return uh, uh, to seek to reestablish this, this nation. And so he says he'll pity his people. He loves his people. And, and, uh, and so verse 19, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach amongst the heathen. 
but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive them into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uttermost of the sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up before because he hath done great things. And so he says, because they have come in and boasted themselves and destroyed my people and destroyed my land, I will destroy them. And so then he says, verse 21, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. And when the Lord decides to do great things, it's much better um, and much more um, authoritative. It's much more powerful than anything the world could ever do, anything that the devil ever may try. As we do know what the devil meant for evil, God means for good. God has this, the sovereign say so. God has the final authority over all things. And uh, and so he comes along and says, fear not, old land. Uh, but you, the only way you get to this fear not, old land is to go back and remind yourself when he says, Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn you even now unto me with all of your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning and rend your hearts and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and, it, and of great kindness and it repenteth him of evil. Who knows if he will turn and repent and leave a blessing behind him? Who knows if this is the final days for us as a nation? Who knows? But if we don't get on our face and we don't repent and we don't seek him, then we're never going to hear the answer. We're never going to see the other side of that thing. And then and then we'll never hear verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. And so I pray today that as you go forth, starting on this Monday, that you seek the face of Almighty God, that you rend your hearts, that you go to him in prayer and fasting and and, uh, and man, confess the sins of our nations, confessing our own personal sin and saying, oh God, please save us and spare us, that we be not a reproach amongst the heathen. And so I pray today you go forth mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray that you are encouraged.